Guys, today we're going to be reacting to something a little bit different. We are starting a new show. This is episode one of Don to Don. That's how love starts, you know. I've gotten a few buddies who have recommended it to me. I had one that went to the premiere and said that it was really good. Uh, they premiered, I think, the first couple episodes or first three or four episodes at the theaters. And I have a lot of people in the Discord that were gassing up Don to Don. They said it's unique. It's got a great animation style. And I saw the trailer a few months ago. And it does look really cool. It does look really nice. Uh, I was given a disclaimer, though, by Calcifer, the Don to Don guy. Uh, where he explains that there is a scene in the first episode with a minor in a very uncomfortable sexual situation played off as a gaggish moment. Uh, Casper says that he wish it wasn't written that way, but he's not the author. And I really appreciate that disclaimer because had I not known that, I probably would have been whiplashed to hell. And that would have been a weird thing to kind of not be expecting and have been dawned on me. Okay, it's probably not the best time for a joke. I'm definitely going to be using that pun again throughout the series. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that pun really just kind of dawned on me. Um, damn, bro. That's going to get old so fast. I am so sorry in advance. Um, but yeah, so that is all the notes I have, which is just kind of the disclaimer. Nothing else too crazy. I'm really excited for this animation style change because I feel like, what, Vinland Saga, the end of Attack on Titan, Jujutsu Kaisen. I feel like I've been mapping out, which I'm not complaining about because MAPPA's got great animation, great shading, great color, great everything. Dude, MAPPA's been killing it. By far my favorite studio, but I think this is going to be a really nice change up. A few of you in the Discord of my buddy in real life said that this is such an abstract and crazy anime, and they're really glad that it got adapted from the manga. So, with all that being said, without further ado, let's jump right into Don to Don Episode 1. That's how love starts, you know. Yeah, beat his ass! I'm not sure if this was what you were referring to. Ooh. Man, we're kind of starting out like this? Action off rip? I like it. Was that it? I think it was. Talking about love hotels. I'm going to go ahead and assume this girl's underage. She got a good kick on him, though. <laughs> she break the fourth wall? <laughs> this is a really nice vibe change from what I've been watching. それ <laughs> 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 oh my god, it's actually so funny. I was just talking about UAP with uh, my brother the other day. Or he was talking to me about it. Hey, that's not nice. Bro, who doesn't love a good conspiracy theory, man? What a bummer. <laughs> of course, that's the one thing he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't believe in. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's a fun dynamic. Hey, there's nothing wrong with an otaku. Come on now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, little something something, okay. 
Bro, she's gonna shit herself if that thing jumps out at her. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it's that crazy to believe in something you've never seen. あの、冗談しに笑いものにされてさ。やらないとばあちゃんを怒るし、もう最低って感じ。でも一番きつかったのは好きな男子にバカにされたことが嫌だったんじゃなくて。好きな子にばあちゃんをバカにされたことが
<laughs> Bro, this is actually crazy, but I kind of like it. Bro, yeah, this animation is wild. Ah, <laughs> uh, this kid really called for a UFO every day. Oh. Nice. I see. I see. So this is where he, uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely, like, transformed. Like, on his face, too. The markings. Fuck him up! Oh, she's about to mess him up! Okay, alright, here we go. Here we go. Take out your chi? Oh my god, bro. She about to go Super Saiyan? Imagine. Is she about to be the honored one? On the brink of death? Oh yeah, she's about to snap. Oh man. Oh yeah. Nah, y'all are toast. Hell yeah. Nice. Oh. Bro, this is such a spectacle. I love these designs. Oh, is he losing it a little bit? A little bit of a... <laughs> okay. Oh, she like basically just like exercised. She just exercised him. Okay. Bro, this show is so absurd. Oh my god. Interesting. So she like keeps him in check. Oh, that's really nice of him. Folded him too? What a gentleman. Yeah, that's a man right there. <laughs> I mean, you know. I mean, that's a man right there. Yeah, we haven't got that yet. <laughs> nice, I love that. The fireworks or the explosion. That's his name too? Nah, I love that. Wow. Is that a real person though? I mean, they referenced it like that was a real person. I'm gonna look it up. Okay, yeah, so he is a real actor. I was curious about that because they mentioned him like he is. That's so funny. And that's also his name. The person that she's been searching for. And you know what? Like, as Ayase was just saying at the beginning of the episode, she's looking for a masculine man. And there's nothing more masculine than chivalry. So the fact that he was able or willing to take off his own clothes and, you know, fold them for her, you know, folding them aside 
the fact that he was willing to take off his clothes that way she wouldn't be exposed and vulnerable I mean you can't really get more can't really get more of a man than that to be honest and I'm only referring to that as an act of chivalry whereas he actually saved her right he somehow crawled through the phone I say somehow because I can't exactly explain I guess the physics or I can't, I, I can't exactly explain how he got possessed oh wait oh I guess I can what the granny turbo granny took his weenie I think bro this show is crazy I know my buddies said that it was a bit absurd and a bit wild and you know abstract but oh, I wasn't expecting it to like most of the lines in this episode were just just wild just crazy I was so like consumed with just reflecting what I was reading in real time I was trying to make sense of it and also I really think this is going to be one of those shows where you just take it episode by episode because you know it is very fun and you know the the animation was really nice the color was great um yeah just like the trailer and the opening too which I also really enjoyed you know she's a schoolgirl, and they were talking about going to a I love hotel but her kicks are gross man they, i mean you can literally feel the weight behind them with the sound effects and the emphasis that they do with the animation it really gives off that feel of a strong impact and then these guys are bullying ken she comes in and clutches up <laughs> and then he goes on his massive conspiracy rant to her which you know i'm a big fan of conspiracy theories i always love looking or thinking outside the box at things and, <laughs> and i'm really enjoying this dynamic of them both bantering and bickering and you know them challenging each other like hey if you don't believe in aliens go to this alien spot if you don't believe in ghosts go to this ghost spot and of course they were going to run into ghosts and aliens because this is our introduction episode and then isa shares a memory with her grandma saying how she was a spirit medium and that she had her doing these rituals uh, as she left the house and she got bullied and picked on and then once the boy that liked her did it and made fun of her she got really angry she said some pretty harsh things to her grandma and then after some self-reflection realized that she was actually upset with him for making fun of her grandma and i actually really like that you know the characters in the show actually do some self-reflection because i mean i think that always adds to a deeper story instead of just and i could tell that this is going to be one of those shows where a lot of craziness a lot of mayhem a lot of abstract is going to be happening so i do like that the subtitles at least have some sustenance at least something for me to invest myself in i'm already starting to like ken and isa seems cool you know she's got a badass kick uh, she was able to access her chi when this crazy scene happened where i'm not even really gonna explain it you guys who've already watched the show already know what the hell this is what, what was even their goal what was even their objective hold on i'm trying to they wanted to make clones or something i don't i'm gonna be honest i was so like all right this is kind of crazy that i didn't even catch what the main goal was dude this scene where he's running out of the tunnel and you see the tunnel stretch out and it goes with the red also when the alien picked up the phone as well and it turned red i thought that was really cool like i love the abstract like animation in that sense right because we know the phone's not actually glowing pure red but from an art perspective and getting across the animation that like <laughs> you know the turbo granny or ken's about to come through the phone shows that it's you know pure red yeah i really like that yeah and the in the tunnel the tunnel angles were super clean. Yeah, see, I, I really like how they kind of push that animation in that way, because obviously, you know, if a ghost takes over your body, it's not going to change the, the screen of your phone. But but I like the direction in terms of like where the abstract color is going and also the contrast with the blue as well. I love the shading with the color and all the glow. Um, I think that's going to be probably one of my favorite parts of the show. That's what I'm leaning towards because for me, like I'm huge on color and I'm huge on shading. Like you can have kind of any animation style, but if you nail those two things, then it'll be so visually pleasing. I think that's the main pull for me because that's what I also really like about the cyberpunk aesthetic is that that neon color. And I'm definitely getting that like neon red, neon blue and, and all of the color theory involved with the show. I mean, it's, it's really visually pleasing. Phone starts ringing and you, yeah, I see the red right here. I love that. Oh, bro, foot to the face. Bro, I thought Turbo Granny, like, <laughs> somehow got the best of Ken there. And, and I thought the show was going to start it like that. Yeah, and then bites him in the crotch. This is definitely going to be a crazy show. But, like, I love the vibe. I hate that I don't have more words to describe it, but, like, I, I don't know. I just love this aesthetic. It's so clean. The animation, too, mixed with this style. I feel like it'd be so easy to botch, but they nailed it. Well, I recognize this. Is that, is that Tondro's voice actor? I recognize... Dude, that sounds... Like, right there, when he was yelling out to Ayase, it sounds like Tondro yelling out. I knew it, bro. It is Tondro. God, I knew it sounded familiar. The entire episode, I'm like, man, who is that? But right there, when he yells out to Ayase, it sounds just like Tondro. Oh, dude, like, right there. That is pure Tondro. Wow. Bro, I'm gonna love this show already if we've got Tondra's voice actor. It's just a little bit different though. 
Dude, I just couldn't put my finger on it when I was watching. Yeah, she's like able to use her chi. Yeah, she's Goku for real. Dude, I love the background on this too. Yeah, it's like the visuals are so clean. Yeah, epic kick. I, I got a feeling that's gonna be the signature move. Dude, yes, the emphasis lines too. God, bro, I love this animation. That's why it's so good, bro. They have nailed the color theory in this show. Everything just looks so well and meshes so cleanly together. Dude, the shading too with the explosions, the neon. It's so visually pleasing. Yeah, I think the only... I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say it's a negative or a downside, but it's just different, right? Like, I think just the absurdities of, you know, biting the alien in the crotch and of course, like, that one scene where they're trying to probe her and taking Ken's weenie. This is definitely... This is this one's definitely gonna throw me for a loop. I feel like I'm gonna yeah I, I I don't know, but I'm definitely enjoying the vibe and I'm definitely enjoying the color and dude It's such a spectacle and if this is about two characters that power up and beat the shit out of people Then you know, I'm always here for that too as far as theories go I think I'm gonna go with you know your typical anime tropes I think that you know these two characters have awakened their power this episode and I think throughout the show They're obviously gonna develop it and you know become really good at it progress it, you know become more transformative They're obviously gonna grow. They're gonna have their power strengthened It really seems like this show puts a lot of stress on the the transformation So when turbo granny god bro, these names are gonna be funny So when turbo granny came out of the phone, well, I guess Ken too, right? I guess if they're combined or he will eventually take what well, he has to go back and get his weenie he then can be free of the curse but obviously he's not going to get rid of his power right that will kind of just defeat the whole purpose of the awakening and i feel like that's kind of where the show would want to go right have both of them power up and you know develop their powers and become beasts right i feel like that's kind of the vibe that i'm getting because you know, she's unlocked her chi she's accessed this memory from her grandma and ken has now been cursed by turbo granny but the way that turbo granny came out of the phone and kind of unveiled by like cracking the bones and transforming and you know with the hair kind of coming out of the mask and, and all of the ways that it transformed i feel like this is going to be such a transform heavy show just by the way that like the animation is right like we saw the aliens have like gadgets and stuff coming out of them we saw ken transform a couple times we got the ghost we got turbo granny kind of running around the ceiling i feel like this is definitely going to be yeah like a, i feel like this is definitely going to be a transformation heavy show i could be wrong but it really feels like that's the direction it's going in since like i i feel like they're going for the spectacle here i don't think they're going like this is no villain saga right like this is no this is no just normal people real world shit kind of just going through and you know living life or going through like day-to-day -day stuff like this is you know aliens and ghosts and turbo granny and and aliens that clone themselves so i feel like the absurdity of this show i think would be perfectly utilized for transformations so yeah i definitely think that this is going to be transformation heavy especially man i just love yeah look at this yeah, and ken kind of like breaking his bones and contorting himself out of the phone it's like so twitchy and yeah they really put a lot of emphasis on this transformation even the hair coming out before turbo granny or ken bites the i, I can definitely see a lot of morphing and a lot of transforming Guys, I enjoyed this episode a lot other than, you know, the couple weird things, but yeah, I'm, I can definitely see this being an absurd show, but I, I'm really curious to see what the next episode is going to be. The only thing I can really theorize is that Ken's going to go back to the tunnel and try to grab his weenie, whatever, <laughs> like, so what? Turbo Granny literally took his weenie? Like, what does that even mean? And yeah, they were talking about a banana, bro, I don't know. Probably should have paid closer attention to the subtitles, but I feel like there was so much other, that's what's going to be hard too for me is that. I'm gonna wanna soak in the visuals and I feel like I'm gonna be missing some subtitles. So if I have to go back a couple of times throughout the show, cut me a little bit of slack here because man, this is like, it, this is so visually pleasing. Like I said, they nailed the color theory here. Like look at the way that they use the glow on the hands. You know, you, you can definitely tell that the green is in the foreground and the blue is in the background, but it, it contours perfectly with the alien's face and also the ceiling, like showing that the glow is coming from the bottom. Dude, sick ass transition flashback into the beginning of the episode. Yeah, the emphasis streaks on the top and bottom were so nice. Like, dude, look at the glow. They nailed it. Look. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to get aggressive. Dude, like the glow coming off of her, and he's it's on, again on the forefront. Yeah, dude, they nailed that. Dude, I hope there's more of that because that is so clean. But yeah, guys, I don't have any other notes. Yeah, I think he's gonna go back and grab his weenie or try to. Um, I think the next episode or or at least the next few episodes will be them trying to get a grip on their powers. I can kind of see them if the show is going for gags, which I think it is. I mean, there's definitely a lot of crazy things in this episode, but if it is going for gags, I can almost kind of see them going throughout their school day and like 
almost kind of like the Hulk. I'm thinking of the Hulk. So if someone's like bullying Ken, like he might have a little bit of like Turbo Granny curse come out and like spaz out. Or maybe if he gets angry, maybe there's like a certain trigger or maybe, oh, well, we know one trigger is Ayase being in trouble, right? Because Ayase was the, Ayase came to his help, right? Like she was able to fend off the bullies um, from throwing stuff at him. So obviously we know that Ken probably has a thing for Ayase and, you know, Ayase has got a little bit of a thing for Ken. She said, you know, her heart's racing. And there at the end of the episode, we had that cool explosion in the background. And she kind of realized that Ken Yakakura, I think. Ken is basically the same exact, has the same exact name. And, you know, he's, he's a man, dude. Yeah, she got the glow in her eyes. Yeah, for sure. I think they're going to be into each other. I can see that. Oh, right. That was the title of the episode. That's how love starts, you know. Gotcha. All right. Well, that's really not too crazy of a prediction here. But yeah, I do think that it's going to be one of the triggers is if ISA is in trouble, he's going to end up peaking. But no way they end up getting a grip on their powers like in episode two, right? I mean, that would seem a bit sudden unless the show's going in a different direction than I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, I can see them kind of like grappling with their powers for a little bit, trying to figure out, you know, the ticks, like what works, what doesn't. Like, we know, what are the triggers? What are the powers? Like, how does he transform? And, um, you know, all of the ins and outs. But, <laughs> but yeah, guys, this was a really funny episode. Uh, definitely a show that I'm going to keep up with. And this will be the weekly upload for when it comes out. Uh, episode two is out. I think it came out a couple days ago, so the next Dungeon On episode would be in, let's see, it comes out in five days, so six days from now. I'm going to try to get it out the following day, the next day. I'm going to try to get that to be a recording day. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you guys did enjoy, I have the full reaction on Patreon. I also have a Discord. Both of those links will be in the description below. And if you guys enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, hope you all all have a good one.